In this video, we are going to be talking about Rawls architecture. In particular, how this framework is built in a computer to create a robot's brain and how it allows a robot to make decisions. To better understand this topic, let's take as an example a six-axis robot, with six revolutionary joints that covers all the degrees of freedom that allows the robot to pick and place an object in the position and orientation desired. For perception purpose, let's consider a 3D camera that senses the position of the object. Our goal is to pick up the object and position it somewhere else. Before to get into it, let's see how the robot should behave. The robot interacts with the real world by acting on actuators and by sensing the environment with sensors. To do that, the robot has a brain, which is the computer or the hardware. The hardware has a CPU to process calculation. We can consider for this case that we are using as computer a Raspberry Pi. If you have a computer, most likely you have an operating system, and for us it will be Ubuntu, a distro of Linux. Our robot application runs on Ubuntu operating system. This robot application is composed by a bunch of scripts code that could be written in C++ or Python for example. In order to take action or sense the environment, our robot's brain has to interface with the hardware. This interaction is made possible thanks to I.O. libraries that make the link between code data and controllers. Then the controllers interact with the drives and finally to sensors and actuators depending on what the brain is requesting. In our example, the sensor is the 3D camera that detects where the object to pick is and the actuators are the six servo motors of the robot arm. Then let's have a look on the process of a pick and place. The camera sends the image to the robot application. In this application there will be a piece of code that processes the image data to determine the position of the object with the respect of the robot's frame. This data is passed to another piece of code that applies the inverse kinematics algorithm to calculate what are the angles over the time that the robot's joints should have in order to pick the object and put in the desired position. Once that these joints angles are determined, then this message is sent to output library, controller, drives and finally the robot moves. This is an explanation of how a robot's behavior looks like every milliseconds. In all this process, where is Rose? As you might have already understood, Rose is running on the application layer and Rose is the framework that build our application with packages, which in turn are composed of smaller pieces of code. These pieces of code are called nodes. So in general, nodes are low-level computational process. In our example, we said that data are passed between nodes. How this communication is possible? There are three main ways of communication. Let's start from the easiest one. The simplest way of communication between nodes is through topic. A topic is simply a data message passes in one way. The topic has a type, for example a string, an integer number or a set of numbers and are characterized by the rows nomenclature. You can think a topic as a one-direction message. In the example shows, the node 1 is publishing a data on topic A. The node 2 is subscribing to topic 1 and publishes topic B and topic C. Important thing to bear in mind is that the node doesn't see to whom is publishing. A node just publish or subscribe to topic and doesn't care where the topic goes or comes from. Before talking about the second way of communication, let's briefly introduce the parameters, which are basically a collection of parameters that describe our robot. Imagine a parameter like a dictionary that defines all the characteristics of your robot. The second important way of communication is through service. A service is based on a client-server model. Both client and server are objects that can be initialized from different nodes. In this type of communication, the client can request data from the server. The server processes the request and sends the response back to the client. While this back and forth data exchange is going on, the client is kept on hold until it receives the response from the server. That's why the services are synchronous. You can imagine this communication as it happens when you are typing a website on your browser. Your computer is the client that is requesting the content of the website. The server receives the request and sends back to your IP address the content of the website. The last type of communication is through actions. This is always based on client-server architecture but this time the communication is asynchronous. 
A client asks to server a goal, the server receives the goal request and while it is processing, sends back to the client the feedback in such a way that the client knows how good the process is. The client can cancel the goal at any time. Once that the server has finished to do what it was asked, it sends the results to the client. This type of communication is typically used when the process is complicated and takes time like motion planning. To better understand this process, you can imagine that this is what is happening when you are ordering a delivery service. Your app is the client that places the order, so you are sending to the server, the restaurant, the goal. You can monitor the status of your order thanks to the feedback that the restaurant is giving to you. You can cancel the order anytime while you are waiting for your food. When the delivery has done its job, it sends to your app the result of the goal achieved. During this process you can do whatever you want and you are not stuck in doing nothing while you are waiting. This is the meaning of asynchronous. Don't worry if you feel a little bit confused right now, but we will cover in depth all these type of communication in the upcoming videos with practical code examples and afterward I can guarantee you that you will understand everything better. Now that we have a rough idea about the ROSE architecture, we can start coding by setting up our environment. First we need to do some consideration about the ROSE distribution to download. On the website link that you can find in the comments down below is reported the list of distribution. I suggest you use the ROSE distribution that has the longest end of life. For Nautic distribution the end of life would be May 2025, meaning that the distribution will be supported till that date. Another distro is Melodic, which you can see that has an end of life in May 2023. An important distro that you will find in the community is Kinetic, whose end of life has expired but since that is very common it is important to mention. It is important to point out that each ROSE distribution is related to Ubuntu distribution as well. Nautic has been developed on Ubuntu 20.04 and supports Python 3. While Melodic is related to Ubuntu 18.04 and supports Python 2. So you should download the ROSE distribution that is related to the Linux distro that you have. For this course we are going to use Nautic distribution Ubuntu 20.04. So before we start to download ROSE Nautic, for training purposes we are going to download Ubuntu 20.04 and install it in a virtual machine, and for this we are going to use VirtualBox. Of course if you already have Ubuntu running native on your machine you can skip the next section. In general it is recommended to test your robot application on a virtual machine and when you are ready to deploy it, you can put your program on the machine of your computer so that the data processing will be much faster. That's all for today, if you think that you got value from this video, subscribe to the channel to not miss any update on the upcoming topic that we will cover. If you have any question regarding ROSE architecture don't hesitate to put a comment down below and I will reach you out. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video where we will download ROSE and start to use it.